Late last year, I took a road trip in my 1969 Volvo 164 Ivy, 11,000 miles from California to Vermont and back. While I was in Vermont, I met a feller out there who's very keen on getting a couple of these cars for him and his family. After a few months and some patience on our part from shippers, we finally have a new project for 2022. This is a 19. 75 Volvo 164 TE. I believe that means top executive. I'll show you around the car and then we'll get a little more familiar with some of its features and accessories as well as the plan for getting this thing sorted in the months ahead. <laughs> oh, she needs a little love, but she's cute. Super. Okay, first impressions with this car. <laughs> it runs awfully. It keeps threatening to stall. Power steering makes too much noise. The clutch cable feels funky. Shifting's good and the power's good, but it definitely doesn't like uh, something's going on electrically with the charging circuit. Um, and boy, is it in remarkable shape. I mean, this dashboard, uncracked, still some pliability in the foam. The speaker's in good shape. The seats are in okay shape. Anyway, here, let's have another look around. My garage is not completely ready yet. And there's the cute little fastened seatbelts blinker every time your seatbelt's unplugged. The oh, temperature's holding up okay. Fuel's okay. All right. Let's... And this car is going to be essentially refurbished. It's like a soft restoration because it's already got perfect paint, really great body condition. Maybe not perfect paint, but we'll see what we can do with polishing that up. And uh, we'll just talk a little bit about what's the shape and the little differences and add-ons that the TE model had. Let's poke under the hood first. 140 something thousand kilometers on this engine and it's fuel injected being a 75. This is also the last year of the 164 series. There is a bunch of stuff that I'm noticing already. Um, these headlight wipers, which are pretty cool, has a clamp here for the two cables that actuate them, and they do work. And additionally, uh, look at that, a Volvo battery, how nice. Uh, what else we've got? Uh, this will have the distributor in 75 uses, um, I think a Hall effect sensor or something, or it's completely without points. It's pointless, okay. Air conditioning should be working. Looks like it's already been retrofitted to take R134. Somebody took out the valve, I think, there for the cold bypass. Um, that might be it. Or it could be that this year specifically uses this valve instead of that. But I don't know, something doesn't add up there, especially with that plate, because I know that those exist to bypass the valves. The engine block, while well, we've got some nice clamps on a few of the lines, this fuel line here is really cracked up. You see that? And then of course the paint on this side with all the heat, it's gone. But the paint on this side of the red block is still red. Okay. And uh, there's the broken wire for the light. Okie doke. A little bit of uh, glue coming out from here. But you know, she's really nice. My goal is to make this basically the nicest example of a TE that we can. Don't mind the mess in the garage. We've still got a bit of unpacking to do and get ready for the work on this car. The doors feel really nice. Oh yeah. Look at the shine on this paint. Oh, gorgeous. Okay, a little bit of a pop there. That's fine. I do hear the clock churning away. Hopefully it keeps time. That'd be nice. We do have a four speed with overdrive. The fuel injection's running kind of funky. There's a bad light right now. Let's see. It'll blink the fastened seatbelt at you, which is kind of fun. We do have a radio. We'll see what it does with the Volvo 8 track. Very cool. A little bit of an ashtray. And these lights here, uh, earlier they were all blinking at me. There we go, like that. And I think something's going on with the charging system. Most likely the regulator. Wouldn't be the first time the regulators are an issue. 
certainly not the last. This is a remarkable shape with the uh, foam still being very supple and pliable on the dashboard. I like that. This speaker grill in the States in all of our deserty climates ends up being destroyed and here it looks really nice, complete. And that's good. We have the big pillows of the, um, whatchamacallies, the whatchamaconahays. And it uh, looks like the plastic clips are still okay. Sun visors, there we go. We have a flippable mirror, but check out the other little fun things about the TE. In addition to it just being a standard car, the best feature, in my opinion, is the back seat. We have two opera lights. <laughs> yep. And a nice black leather. You can see it's, you know, see how these wrinkles are so sharp? It shows me that it's pretty dry. Oof, we want to make sure before anybody really sits and puts their elbows and knees into this leather that it gets properly moisturized. We've got some literature here. I haven't looked at this yet. Only got the car in the driveway a little bit. Okay, some information from the dealer and when it was bought and some photos that make it look better than it really is. Volvo Drive is a... Cool. Nice. Tis a magazine, and we have the owner's manual. Okay, that's very thoughtful. Look at that, a very skinny steering wheel cover. Those aren't something you usually see. All right, I'm gonna turn off these opera lights before we drain our battery too much, but you know, it's good. The headrests back here are really cool. And we've got some speakers in the rear shelf. We have a carpeted rear shelf, nice carpet. The nets on the back of these seats, very good. Gosh, everything is really nice. They don't have chrome on these ones. These are all blacked out little trims. Okay, moving on to the rear. Give the hydrocarbons enough time to air out. Well, the trim's in good shape, so I don't have to work too hard on that. I've got all this cardboard down to see where it leaks, if at all, and then I'll, I'll get under the car later and do some investigating. The trunk holds itself up, that's good. The light works, nice, and it has a carpet. The carpet, it might be a little hard to see, but it is actually this really attractive texture. It's not, it might be completely black, but it looks like it's got some specks of blue or gray in it. This panel here could use a little bit of refurbing as well as the carpet entirely. I don't know if it's the original, original carpet, but it just seems to be a regular plastic backed um, low pile for automotive use. Not very um, specially formed, just like straight panels of carpet could do it. And uh, we've got the square trim rings because the trim rings on these cars were not rounded. They were supposed to be uh, with an angle like this. And if you get the rounded ones, means that they're aftermarket, most likely. Cool, good looking car, very excited. And uh, yeah, I don't have too much work on this one. The other 164 project is gonna be the big one because if I haven't told you already, the other 164 will be an EV conversion and it needs to get paint and body first. So paint and body is the toughest part of any car restoration because it's all about the prep, the quality, and the time that it will spend in a shop, which is that triangle, you pick two out of three, fast, cheap, or good. We're hoping to get it fast and good, which means it ain't gonna be cheap. This reminds me of Willow and the guy goes, no apprentice this year. Anyway, I'm still waking up today, but this is a fun little thing to get me out of bed. Oh, looks like we got a little, little dent here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. And taillights are also in good shape, so bravo. Uh, can we peek underneath? Do you, think there's, do you think there's a chance we'll see anything? I'm looking for any signs of rust. A little bit of paint coming off there. You know, in this year, they actually took the tank, the gas tank is up by the axle. It's no longer in the rear, um, directly under the trunk. And that was a safety thing so they can get it further away from collision zones. Okay, take another look out front, the business side of things. Yep, there's me R. I have a video of these working, so I don't need to try them today, but they work. And 
and uh, I think they're all completely mechanical. I don't think there's any like a hydraulic pneumatic function to them, but I could be wrong. Mechanical makes sense though. Just glad it's complete, even though there's gonna be little things that I can take off here and there in reference for repairs. The mirror is black, that's interesting. I'm used to it being white, but the um, plastic looks like it's good. If the dashboard is any indication, then that's nice. And these, I don't know if that's the original little wing to the wiper, let's see. It's an Anko wiper. Interesting, but I like the, I like that. Everything's doing well. A little bit of a chip here. Okay, we might we might go for a new windscreen or not. We'll see. And it looks like some rust repair along the bottom of that windscreen. So yeah, wet climates, you know what I mean? The trim on the later year cars, instead of being two big pieces with a small connection in the middle, they went into these corner. One, two, three, four, and then it was one bottom piece, one side piece, top. So you kind of have a smoother look here, and it actually doesn't really catch your eye on the corners, but it makes it look like a more unified and sleek trim piece. These are chromed as well, interesting. Easy to see, and uh, yeah, check out Overdrive later, make sure everything works. That's that, this is a quick intro onto the car. It's, uh, we just call it the TE for short. I like to call it the TE, like the villain from uh, the Bond film, Roger Moore's first Bond. Anyway, thanks for uh, checking this out. Stay tuned, we'll have more coming soon on this car. To the R is six foot three. The length of the R is 15 feet, 180 inches. So it's funny that this thing's actually dimensionally longer than an S60R.